So we know that everything in the universe is made of matter. This house, that tree, me, and also you. And we know that the smallest unit of matter is the atom. Atoms are made of subatomic particles like protons, neutrons, and electrons, and that's the smallest that it goes. Just kidding. Turns out, there are particles in the universe that are even smaller than subatomic particles. The science that deals with these particles is called quantum chromodynamics. But to fully understand quantum chromodynamics, we have to overview something a bit simpler, quantum electrodynamics. In quantum electrodynamics, electrically charged particles interact by shooting photons back and forth. The electron does this by emitting a photon as it gets closer to another electron, and recoiling once the photon is released. Back to chromodynamics. Quantum chromodynamics deals with particles called quarks and gluons that are essentially sub-subatomic particles. Quarks are found in nucleons, and each nucleon contains three quarks, which can either be up or down. Up and down do not really have much to do with direction. They simply provide a name for complex properties of different quarks. There are four other types of quarks in addition to up and down quarks. Top, bottom, charm, and strange. But those are irrelevant for now. Quarks zoom around inside the nucleon at extremely high speed. So how do they stay inside the nucleon without accidentally zooming into the middle of nowhere? There has to be something that keeps them contained, and those particles are known as gluons. Gluons come in three different types of charges, red, Red, green, and blue. These names do not refer to actual color. Color charge names only exist for distinction. Just as photons can have a positive or negative charge, gluons can have a red, green, or blue charge. When gluons pass between quarks, the gluons are able to interact with each other because of their color charge. Unlike photons emitted by electrons, which are completely oblivious to each other, this is best depicted using Feynman diagrams, which were created by physicist Richard Feynman. The drawings represent the equations of the interaction, which are pretty much unsolvable unless you're some brilliant math genius, which I am not. Unfortunately. And because of this interaction, their governing forces, the electromagnetic force and the strong force, are fundamentally different. Unlike the electromagnetic force, which weakens as particles become further apart, the strong force becomes stronger as particles become further apart. Usually, the strong force keeps the quarks together and pulls them back. However, if there's a force that's strong enough, it may be able to shove a quark out of the nucleon. The connecting force will stretch until it eventually breaks, and an anti-quark made of antimatter will form at the other end. The string will continue splitting and forming quark and anti-quark pairs. So now you have a stream of quark-anti-quark -quark pairs that are more or less going in the same direction. And if you zoom out of the picture, it would just be a unified beam called a jet. A phenomenon like this usually happens in collisions. So quantum chromodynamics and quantum mechanics in general is a vast field of opportunities that is progressing as technology advances. Many different elementary particles besides quarks and gluons have been discovered, and more may be uncovered in the future. If you wake up one day to find the whole world flipped upside down and gone wrong, don't be surprised. After all, many things are not as they seem. I guess that's just the nature of quantum physics.